Okay, so if you've been following my ripple control project um, quite a few years ago, like three and a half-ish now, I think, um, I made this receiver, this ripple control receiver. So it's hard to get actual ripple control receivers because one, they're something that's usually owned by the power company, and two, they're not super common here in the U.S. Now, there is a power cooperative in the North Dakota, South Dakota, Minnesota area. They run ripple control on their network over there, but I, that's like the only spot I've ever seen it in the U.S. It's super common in Australia and New Zealand, which is that's where I got my real receivers from, if you remember. So, yeah, so I've been kind of over to the whole time I've been interested in this. I've been trying to make my own receiver in the hopes of making one good enough that I can like actually like put it on a PCB and get it working so I can actually use them. But this was my first attempt at it. So this used an Atmega 328P microcontroller and a single diode rectifier. It had a 9-volt AC transformer that would connect here. And then there was a bi-stable relay down here that these two uh, pulse the coils of. Uh, it's been removed since it had, there was a problem with it and I took it out. But the main issue with this receiver was it's not very featureful. It's pretty much just set the command it responds to and that's about it. It doesn't have many other features. Now, the filter circuit for this to detect the actual ripple signal sent over the mains, it was just a high pass filter sent into a single diode rectifier and a capacitor for buffering it and then straight into an analog pin. And I would measure the voltage level and whenever the ripple signal was present, the voltage would go a little bit up. So that's how I was detecting it. Now, one, you can't program the frequency of it, so that's a problem. So it'll, it would respond to any ripple signal that was sent, like any frequency. But also, as the mains voltage varies, that would also vary that like base level it sits at. So I'd constantly have to adjust the threshold with one of these potentiometers. So that was a problem. Now, I have tried for the past while, and this is how I'm gonna go over my new one here in a moment. And I was trying to do it in software, that's how the new ones, like the actual ones, do it now, but that is way over my head, and I was having weird variable underflow issues, so I'm leaving that for the next version. But let's put this away, and I'll show my version 2 that I just got done with here. So, this is it. Just a prototype, so it's just on a prototype board. If it works well enough, and it has for quite a while now, but... I'm gonna put it through a bunch of tests and if it works really well, I'm gonna put it on PCBs and make like a little, probably 3D print a little case for it and then I'll just make a bunch and then I'll actually have receivers to use. Now, this one is based off of PIC 16F690. It's my new like favorite chip to use in everything. It's 4K of program space, 256 bytes of RAM. So not a super big microcontroller, but it works well enough. Uh, this one is running on the internal crystal um, underneath here. There is a 16 megahertz crystal, but I'm not using it. I was gonna use it because I was trying to do this in software, but I've changed how this works because the software one was giving me nothing but issues. It still powers off an iVolt transformer, so that's plugged in there. But I was trying to do this with a capacitive dropper, and I, I mean, those are scary, one, because they reference to the mains directly, but I also couldn't find a good way to re just receive the actual signal when it's on a capacitive dropper, so I'll leave that part to version the next version as well. But in any case, uh, here we have the bi-stable relay. We have a little 7805 voltage regulator, rectifier, big capacitor, which actually this needs to be increased in size. It's only 470 microfarad, but I think it's like 63 volts, so that's why it's so big. Yeah, it does not need to be that high voltage, but proper bi-stable relay in this one. So these just have two two pins for the contact and then three for the coils. So the, the center one is common positive and then you pulse either of the outer two to change the state of it. So these will sit in whatever position you left them at. So it's not powered right now at all. It has this little switch so you can set the state of it. But if I change it to state A and don't do anything to it, it'll stay like that. To change it to state B, I just pulse the off coil and it flips it the other way. So you don't have to power these continuously, which is really nice. So this little board that's plugged in here, that's the tone detector. That was added on after I gave up on software decoding. That's an NE567 little tone decoder IC. I'm really impressed with those. They're really, really sensitive and honestly very easy to use. Um, 
for now, it's being set by this potentiometer here, this little trimmer potentiometer. But I'm going to experiment around with using a software potentiometer and see if I can set it by the microcontroller through programming, because I would love to not have to adjust any hardware to program these things. But uh, that is first passed through this four-stage RC high-pass high filter, which gets rid of the 60 hertz most of the way. So then this can actually detect the signal. So it works really well. Little red LED on there that shows whenever this is detecting a signal. So it's basically a little PLL and whenever its frequency matches the frequency it's receiving, the open collector goes low. Very untechnical explanation of it, but that's as much as you need to understand to get things to work. So in any case, that's that. Transistors to drive the relay. Regulator, as I said, little bicolor LED. I'm only using the green portion of it though. You can see it there. It's flashing once every second. So in the final model, it will be just a regular green LED, but um, once every second is normal and the clock is set. Once every two seconds is normal, but the clock is not set. So you can tell if the clock is set or not just by looking at the relay. Once every four seconds is fail safe mode. And once every quarter second approximately is it's receiving a signal. So underneath this board is also a little voltage comparator, LM311N and another LED. So that's converting the sine wave mains frequency into a square wave, which drives an interrupt on the PIC 16 f 690 And it keeps time that way. So it has just a basic 24 hour, hour, minute, second clock. And it uses that to keep time. It uses that to time the ripple signal pulses. So since it was invented, ripple signaling has always used the mains frequency to time the protocol, because even if the mains frequency varies, then the synchronous motors in the original mechanical receivers would stay at the same speed that the transmitter is at, no matter what the mains frequency varies. So they still to this day do that. I mean, I don't think it's really necessary now, considering this is a very slow protocol still, but I mean, I guess it works. It's a reliable clock signal that'll always be the same between the transmitter and receiver. So, hey, I mean, it works. And then it's also continuously monitoring that. So it's counting how long it's been since the last zero crossing was detected. So if it goes over like 32 milliseconds, I have it set to, it knows the power is lost and then it can use the uh, charge in this capacitor to change the state of the relay. So uh, if we look at the software here, uh, this is the Windows software I used to program it that I've suffered through making. It's been way too long since I did anything with Windows forms, but I think it came out nice. So here you could set the channel assignment. You can set the relay position at startup and power loss like I was talking about. Now why it says A and B is because if you look at actual rapport receivers, like this is a Zelliger RM3. So this, uh, these are my 230 volt 50 hertz ones. I love this receiver, but it's really hard to use these on 60 hertz power and I can't change the frequency of it. So it makes them a little difficult to use. Hence why I'm putting effort into making my own and trying to find a source for 60 hertz ones. But in any case, if you look at the relay, it's labeled A for on and B for off. Now the newer ones like the Intermet RO3, like this one, it's not labeled on there like that, but if you look at the software, um, ROP, if you look in, in programming, it also refers to on as A and off as B. So not really sure why it does that, but I guess I'm just kind of keeping to the standards I can figure out based on what I've seen in real receivers. But in any case, you can set the on and off uh, states, like the relay states at startup and power loss. Now fail safe mode, it's basically counting how many hours it's been since the last ripple transmission was received. And then if a transmitter fails, it's gonna stop hearing any signals from it. So if it goes over a certain number of hours, which is what you set right here, it can change the state of the relay. Now, it also has a little schedule, so on and off times, and it uses its clock. So assuming the clock is set, it uses this uh, option. So on fail safe, it'll revert to the schedule defined below. And then if the clock is not set, you can have it set to either A or B that way, or no change if you wanted, which same with all these others. And then clock synchronization. So you set the time in the receiver by, I mean, it doesn't have like a battery or anything to keep it. So if you power cycle it, it loses the time, but you basically tell it a ripple transmission. So in this case, channel zero on, so plus zero, and then what time? So whenever I send plus zero, it'll set the receiver time to midnight in this case. So actually what I'll do is I'll set the time right now. And then, yeah, you can put two of these. I evidently forgot to change these labels. But now if I go into status, uh, shows the current time, 
how long it's been since the last signal. Receiver state, it's normal. That'll be either normal or fail safe, but it's normal right now. Schedule state, either enabled or disabled. It also just measures the mains frequency to tell if it's 60 hertz or 50 hertz to figure out what overflow value to use for the 24 hour clock. So it also displays that here. And then the status of the decoder. So the decoder is totally interrupt based and this was a huge help in debugging it. So this is the buffer and the state of it. So now if I go in here, you can do a bunch of different things. So let's look at receiver information. Um, serial number, hardware and software revisions, when it was last programmed, so just a little bit ago, 1831, it's 1853 now, and then a receiver ID, which is set to test. So if I go in here, wrong one, receiver ID, you can basically just define a string in here. So used for tracking or keeping some form of note on each receiver. So if I do hello, YouTube as I very type, very slowly type with one hand and save that. Now, if we go back into information, you'll see hello YouTube is saved in there. So that's stored in the EEPROM. And now you can also emulate a signal. So if you want to test it without actually using a transmitter, you can just simulate a decrement command. So you can either pick from the list or just manually define the bits by changing these. Um, you can set the time, you can set the relay state to on or off. So it's currently off. If I turn it on, it changes to on. Then you can also look at the status, which I was showing. You can look at previous signals, which I'll show in a minute. And then log monitor, which I'll also show in a minute. Restart receiver lets you just force it to restart as if it were just powered on. So it just triggers a watchdog reset. And then advanced, you can change timing values. So in here, the decoder average threshold. So in decabit protocol, which this is a decabit only receiver, I didn't mention that yet, but yeah, this is a decabit only receiver. And in decabit protocol, it will, each bit lasts 30 mains cycles. So 30 cycles of the 60 Hertz mains is how long one bit lasts. Now you can set a threshold in here. So how many out of those 30 have to show the signal present for it to consider that bit to be one. So I have it set to 15, so it has to be at least half of them show um, the signal present. So if you have a weak signal, it can still kind of compensate for it. And then state change threshold. Um, the signal coming from this 567, if you have like a weak signal or there's some form of noise, that can flicker in and out. So that's how many milliseconds it has to remain stable before it'll actually consider that to be the actual state that it is. And then mains failure threshold, that's how many milliseconds since the last zero crossing before it assumes the power failed. So if it was too sensitive and it false tripped all the time, you can change that. So now I guess I'll just send some commands to it. It's assigned to decabit channel 10 and 100. So if we go to my transmitter here, and nope, did the wrong one. Let's turn it on. If I send channel 10 on, and cue that. And then I'll, actually I'll show the log this time. Control L, so this basically just shows all the log messages it generates real time. So if I send the signal to it, we can watch this. There it is. Oh, and the relay was already on, so it didn't actually change. But in any case, relay A changed to on, it matched command number one, and this is the raw decabit signal that it decoded, so plus 10 is what it figured it out as. And then let's turn it off. So we'll use the master command this time. So we'll do, we'll send that. And I'll let you watch it here. There's the faster LED flash rate. There, and the relay turned off. And you see the little serial light flickered. So now if we look at the log, Minus 100 was decoded, command 2 matched, and the relay changed to state B. Now, I was talking about time synchronization, so let's uh, go ahead and send plus 0. And then you'll see the, uh, we'll see the time change, so if I go back into status here, send that. So uh, you see the time was set to midnight because I just sent plus zero and that was the time synchronization command that sets it to midnight as defined down here. So it also reset this counter. So that goes back to zero. The fail safe timers 
set back to five hours basically because that's what I have it set to. And then there's the last signal it received. And then I guess I can show it changing the state when you power it off. So I'll set this on and then I'll unplug it and you can watch it change to off. There, so I just unplugged this and the relay is now off. So yeah, it works pretty well and I haven't had any issues with it uh, during my testing here. I was worried about the frequency of this drifting, but it seems to be okay. And if it continues to perform well, I'm gonna design it, well, I'm gonna work on designing the PCB maybe tomorrow, but I'm gonna design a PCB for it, get it all made, and hopefully have one of the smallest ripple control receivers in existence, because that's what I'm going for with this one. I'm gonna make everything surface mount on the PCB, but uh, in any case, yeah, that's my ripple receiver. We'll see if it works out well, and if it does, then I'll probably make a video once I have it on PCBs.